Are, are we ready? Can we start now? We're ready. Get it, get it, get it. I'm Kelly Osborne, and I am joined by my best friend, Jeff Beecher. And we have an amazing show for you this week. We're so happy that you've joined us for a second episode. We love you guys. We don't have a show without our listeners. You are our family. Our show today, we are joined by one of my favorite doctors in the world. My absolute favorite doctor and one of my favorite people on the planet. That's true. It's very <laughs> true. Dr. Robert Heisenger. Um, should Welcome. We do, I think we should start like doing like claps and applause. No, they'll put that in. Oh, okay, okay. Jeff. Dr. Hazang, everybody. Woo! Woo! You're making me blush now. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today, Dr. Hazanger, we brought you on because we want to talk about weight loss because it's such a topic of conversation with Jeff and I. It's because people look at us now. We went from being the fat, angry people to people that... And we're in Balmain and Balmain. You're such a douche. <laughs> <laughs> what? And what's wrong? I'm wearing bomb no, I, I mean, and bomb it's like size medium. Do you know what I'm fucking wearing? Uh, something very nice. You look beautiful. Zara. Okay. okay. You get it? It's all right. You know, like, I don't care. Uh, I don't, I don't always have good. to wear expensive. I, my point by saying Balmain is I was never... Balmain, able... Balmain. I, look at no, me. No, meaning the Bitches pants and the hanging shirt. hanging on my nuts because I'm skinny now. No, because these are skinny people clothing. So I'm uh, very proud I know of what you mean. I, 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 you know what? I'll stop for a second and take that back because I know what that's like when you go to those stores and not one thing in there fits you. I used to, when I used to shop at the Tall and Fat store, or it's called Rochester Big and Tall or whatever it's called. And uh, you know, Did you know Jeff back then? Yeah, of course. I did. I did. Yeah, was with his club. He was... Theater. Theater. Oh, theater. yeah. You can't Excuse say club. Me. You have to say theater. Otherwise, <laughs> he gets <laughs> very upset. What do I know? <laughs> I'm a stupid doctor. No. I'm like... I was picking Dr. Hyzenga's brain on everything from like the vaccines and more weight loss stuff and the OCD before, because we were talking about like how much of weight loss is mental. It's all mental. I mean, that's our opinion anyway. I think so. Well, there's a lot of genetics that gets the ball rolling and we've got an obesogenic world and given our genetics, we can't handle it. Yeah, no, I can't. Can, can, I, can I just quickly talk about the tall and fat store. Sorry, the, the oh, tall sorry, and, the tall and fat store. No, no, I'll just finish the story. So for 15 years, I shopped there, and some of those years, I was so fat, I couldn't even fit into the clothing there. Like, it would be like 5 or 6X, and then they would be stopped. Was it like the store that we used to go to here in Beverly Hills? Yeah, 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 yeah okay, I remember. And I would be so angry. I felt so bad. I don't want to apologize now to the, uh, to the people in the store. He was horrible no, to them in there. I would, I would, it would not fit me, and I would yell like it's their fault. I'd be like, what the fuck? Sorry for cursing. What the beep? I'd be like, this is bullshit. This, is, this place sucks. And Yeah, and nothing would fit, and I would get angrier and angrier. And then I outgrew the clothes a couple times in the in the in the fat store. So that's when I was like, all right, like things are out of control. And then I'd lose a hundred pounds, get to like from four and change to like three and change, and I'd be able to fit again. I'd be kind of happy. But at the end, when I lost all the weight, I'd go there and I had I knew, and it was rushed for a, it was some event and I needed a tuxedo. And I brought the tuxedo to get altered. I'm like, can you guys alter this? They're like, no, you don't shop her anymore. And I was like, that's so screwed up. Like I've been shopping here for 15 years and I was fat. Like you should be like proud of me they were like mad at me that i don't shop there anymore like that's funny I was that is so i called funny. the president of the company and i'm like it's jeff beecher and the, and the assistant's like who are you they were like in boston or something it's like a multi-billion dollar company and the lady's like who are you i'm like well google me <laughs> and then she googled me and then she put me in there and the guy's like how can i help you i'm like listen i've been with you guys for 15 years i lost 240 or 50 pounds at the time i go and you know i just don't think it's cool that you guys aren't like nice to me now because I lost the weight. Like You should be. You really called them and complained? <laughs> yeah, I called them and I go, you guys should have an incentive program for people that lose weight and like give back. Why? Like, Their store is for bigger people. I know, but like say like you lose weight, like they should like make you like like here's 1% back at the end of the 10 years or whatever. I don't know. They hand you off to their sister weight loss company. Yeah, I think so. Anyway. Okay, so let's, let's start with Jeff's weight loss journey. You've been with Jeff fin since the beginning of his weight loss journey, A right? A big chunk of it, yeah. So what did you recommend for Jeff? Well, Jeff, tell your story because, I mean, he basically went a lot of different places. and Yeah, so, I mean, I came to Doc when I was in L.A. I was referred by a good friend, uh, Adam Goodman, if you recall. And, uh, and then I met Doc, and then Doc was in the, uh, the Biggest Loser, the television show. Not in, what, we, what you were I was technical. one of the consultants, one yeah. of the people on the screen. Yeah, well, people on the screen. 
<laughs> he's so smooth. This guy's the smoothest. By the way, in case you're listening to this audio, he's like super doctor. This guy's like good looking and like cool and he's got the whole mind. The house in Malibu, you know, overlooks the ocean. He's, every, he's the man. We love you, Dr. Zenga. Anyway. Uh, can can so we just please just stop for a second? I love sucking the doctor. Uh, can you just not? Like, like every, you, you literally are like essing the D right now. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Like we, you we can beep it biggest, out. Like the biggest kiss ass ever. We, we know this. this you is, can't this like. Is my specialty. Can we just like not be douchey, Jeff, for like one that douche- second? That's I think you're being rude to me and my fans by calling uh, me douchey. your fans <laughs> <laughs> by calling me douchey for, for complimenting a very dear friend of mine who helped save my life multiple times. Okay, and why you were is there that? when my my finger got sliced open, and we who do we drive to? <laughs> Talk to Isenga, and then oh my god, that was really funny. <laughs> So, I mean, I, I peaked out in 2013, 14, and at around 440, something like that. And he was very angry, but funny. But he was angry. You were very angry. Yeah, it was a funny, angry fight. At 440, you know, the chance that you live a full life is zero. And the chance that, you know, you die 25 plus years early is very real. You know, you so all, every time I'd see you, you'd always subtly kind of drop those things like, you know, you're only going to live. It's I mean, a death sentence. Yeah. It's not call, like... He uses all the buzzwords, death sentence, you know. <laughs> you, you, I mean, every... But you're every, like, oh my God, I'm going to die. No, you would just like lightly drop it. You know, every couple hundred pounds, you're overweight. You know, it's just another 30, 40 years of your life. But yeah, I mean, it's fine, you know. And then you'd, you'd always subtly just be like, come on, you got to exercise. So you got me into walking and then you got me into running. It's a lot like scared straight, Jeff. I mean, at a certain point, <laughs> yeah. you know, you got to scare them straight because you're looking at a person that is just not going to be on the planet and they've got to know it. You can't be subtle. Exactly. You know, they would call me Dr. Death on Loser. And, you know, at a certain point, yeah, you can't be subtle anymore. You have to say, hey, Jeff, what are you doing in, you know, 2030? You know, I don't know. You're not going to be here, Jeff. You know, you got to think yeah. along those terms. Yeah. Yeah, and I used to not, when I was really young, I used to be like, oh, I'll be dead by the time I'm 35, but I'll live a rock star life. I used to literally say that all the time. But it's the things that we tell ourselves. Isn't that insane? Like, it's the things that we tell ourselves so that, because there's a certain part of us, and, and, and I speak from experience when I say this, that is comfortable in the misery of being fat because it's what we know. And then, you're, because I will tell you, like, uh, even now, I went and did this TV show last week, and they styled me on it, and I was like, I don't wear dresses. I don't wear pink. And I was like, I couldn't wear that. I would never do that. They put me in this dress, and all of a sudden, I was like, I wear pink, and I'm like a cupcake, <laughs> and this is so much fun. <laughs> and I'm sat there like, I've told myself that because I was bigger, I had to wear black all the time. Oh, my God. I had the same problem. Yeah, I had to wear black all the time, and that I couldn't wear anything colorful. I'm and like, I had the same problem. I'm wearing all black. I'm still wearing all black. No, I know. I'm like, I'm looking down at myself still Body wearing all black. Body dysmorphia. But it's crazy. I over. still have it. Cal, apartments.com knows that we've been doing everything from home lately. Working, exercising, schooling your brother's kids. I mean, they're eating breakfast, lunch. Can you breakfast, even remember lunch. a time where you've been home this month? Ever? Ever no, in your life? Never.com. Never.com. And that's why I'm really grateful for apartments.com. It's they given have, us a newfound appreciation of home. Like, you've redone your home, I have moved, and it's made you realize that the space that you live in is so important to you. And if you're in that place right now, like many people are, where you're like, okay, I can't live in these same four walls, I need something new, and you don't know what that new is, go to apartments.com. They have the most listings, whether you want a condo, a house, a studio, you want a duplex, whatever it is you're looking for, they have it, and they have this incredible 3D virtual tour that is, to me... I never, ever want to go to a house again if they have these tools. Like, what's the point? You get a lot of inspiration from it for, like, your current house. Like, I mean, I, I love it so much. I, like, I've been searching through all the hallways and the I think you've looked through and, every lobby in yeah. Miami. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On their virtual tours. It's amazing. We love Apartments.com. Apartments.com, the most popular place to find a place. But for, for the people at home listening, Jeff and I have always been – fully honest about how we lost weight. We did bariatric surgery. We had the gastric sleeve done. And it is not a quick fix. It is a lot of work. You have to, I did a year of therapy before I committed to doing it. I stopped, I was almost two years sober before I had the surgery. And I don't, I don't want to scare anyone to not do it. But for me, it was about five years before I did it. 
I, I, I went I went to get it. I ran out of the hospital. I ran out of the surgery center. Um, finally, I did it one time. Uh, a friend of mine took me to the hospital really early. I'll never forget that one. And then finally, we got uh, I got the surgery. And the, what I always say to everyone is the surgery is just a quick, not a quick, it's a, it's one Band-Aid. It's one, one thing that'll help you. And it's, it's, a like ma- a it's a major blanket. thing. Like yeah. It's there to. It's it, a part of the whole treatment. It, and the thing is, is that when you go to do the surgery, if it's something anybody who's listening right now wants to do, there's a reason why they tell you every single thing on there and that they have so many rules because if you don't do one of those things, things can happen and go wrong. Like for example, you have to be really careful with your protein intake after surgery. Oh yeah. Really, really careful because you will lose all of your hair if you are not careful. I lost hair. You, a lot of people lost hair. And they say, like the groups that they put you in before where you meet other people who are doing the surgery, stay connected to those people because you need other people around you who are going through what you're going through because your relationship with food will drastically change. And it, 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 for a bit, you grieve it. It's weird. Like your, your mind is so used to consuming such large amounts. And then you go to eating like a baby. And having to like retrain so, yourself yeah. but and with like mushy foods and soft foods. And then you slowly build up to being able to have more solid food. See, where you did therapy and you were two years sober before it, I went to a, a vegan a vegan institute mm-hmm. and I learned how to eat vegan. I went vegan, raw vegan. I started doing therapy also. And that's the biggest thing. That's what actually made me make good decisions like get the surgery instead mm-hmm. of run out of the surgery, which is therapy. Fixing your head is everything. Yes, there's lots of different tools like getting a surgery and exercising and eating right and all that, but fixing your head, in my opinion... Well, that's what I always say, mind, body, and soul. Yes. You have to do the mind, then you can do the body, and then you get the soul. Oh, I still got to work on that soul thing. I'm on the soul part now, too, <laughs> and I keep fucking up, so <laughs> it's like... Do the you want to talk that, about... Can, can well, I tell the only you thing, got, I'd like to back up even a little bit because why did you and Jeff get in that position? Because I think you guys have taken and really illustrate what you have to do once you're way behind the eight ball. But I think the scariest thing to me is... How did I get there? Yeah, how did you get there? And how did the country get where we are? Because the real treatment is to never get where you two were. Mm -hmm. And that starts... We have studies in college kids, sedentary, normal weight college kids that don't have any comorbidities, that aren't smoking cigarettes, and up to a quarter of them have what we call insulin resistance already at that part of their lives because of the diet they eat, because of their lifestyle, not necessarily the sedentary lifestyle. They take in food and they can't metabolize it. They have sick metabolic systems. Mm -hmm. And we now know, yeah, you have to be worried about high sugar because if sugar goes too high, it grabs hold of your cells, the cells get digested, and you age quicker. That's mm. the problem with diabetes. That's the problem with prediabetes. It's a premature aging system. But the primary problem is too much insulin. So when your insulin goes up, and this happens in thin individuals I, in That was going to be my next question. Are you don't the... have to be overweight to have the problem. Okay. That's so interesting. And then once you have high insulin, that's what causes premature heart disease, increased risk of Alzheimer's, increased risk of cancer, all these diseases. We can stop 80% of diseases. We can keep you out of doctor's office 80% of the time if we start early and do the right things. We're talking about how you save somebody that's way, way, that's had so many errors, they've gained an extra 100, 200, 300 pounds. But we have to work way, way before that yeah. prevention. So basically, I can tell you is that for me, I, I was newly sober. I went from being an extremist in everything to an extremist in nothing. And I started to comfort myself with food. And then what I had realized is I can't remember the name of the hormone, so maybe you'll be able to help me. But it's the hormone that your body produces when you're in starvation mode. Well, there's a lot of, you know, there's leptin and ghrelin. Yeah, and, the, all of that. Yeah, okay, there's, so there's 12 different so, appetite and hunger hormones. So all of those hormones, when I stopped taking Adderall every day, um, were overreacting. They're screaming. And they were like, you're starving, you're starving. So anything that I um, ate turned into fat. 
So my body was like, what is going... And it took them a really long time to figure out what was going on with me. And once they figured that out, they were like, oh, here's your options. You can go on this crazy medication or we could just cut the hormone out. And then I was like, how do you do that? And then they explained to me the surgery. And then I realized that it was Jeff that had the surgery as well. And Jeff's like, you have to do it. It'll change your life. And I was terrified. I was like, no, I think that's really extreme. I'm kind of against surgeries. I don't really want to do it. And then I started to see how it changed Jeff's life. And I saw how once you can get that freedom of the obsession, because I will tell you, once that hormone was cut out of my body, that obsession was gone. My relationship with food completely changed. And I didn't look at it as a way to comfort myself or punish myself anymore. I only look at food as a way to fuel myself now. Unless you're Jeff Beecher, who I catch face fucking food on the side of the street at 9.30 p.m. <laughs> last night. You know, it would be much better if I had a non-conspicuous car. Like, I know. <laughs> like the 1958 black and black Corvette a block away from your house outside so the convenience store. a block away from store, my house outside of Chowing down I on Pringles hear this and story. pretzels and Gatorade. So I literally am sat there and I'm like at the light. And I'm like. And this like, is the last night, Doc. Of I course. Love, and we hadn't even seen each other. We hadn't even spoken. And I go, hey, that car looks like Jeff's car. And I pull up next to it. And I rolled down my window. He sat there, and I'm not even joking. Face fucking, like, food, like Pringles and pretzels. And he's like, and I look over, and I was like, you're right. And he just starts laughing. And I start laughing so hard, I had to pull over. And I fall out of my car because I'm still laughing. And he's like, why? How is it that I go and I cheat on my diet? And you, you of all people, just roll up right next to me. And then I went, I I literally, I was like, I have to fucking leave because I have to pee so bad because I'm laughing. And then I go home, I'm lying in bed, and I'm still laughing because it's just like, of course. He cheats, and he's like... So, like, you've never seen anything like it. He was like, oh, like shoving it. No, in it was like, it was like, like it when was... I was 400 pounds. Yeah. I was all stressed out from work. We want to talk about what. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was all sh- and, you know, and this goes to show like everyone, like food is a drug. And what did I go to? I was stressed out. I was annoyed. I didn't work out. I, you know, my body's still hurting. So I haven't been able to do my intense workouts. And because um, I had a leg surgery for those of you guys just uh, tuning in. Right. The skin cut off. What? Why are you? Because we're not allowed to talk about the leg surgery anymore. It's all no, we talk about. It, no, this is a new podcast. Okay. We, we just but okay. the other ones. But I you have whenever... a classic binging thing, Jeff. We know that. Yeah. You're yeah. a binger. And binging is in the kind of the brain trying to get that dopamine, you know, pleasure but, but you center. Know what, you and know what I do in my house? There's so. drugs. There's gambling. All these things hit that same button. I know. And you've got it. And we used, I used to hear the same story on Loser. We would have people, and they were too embarrassed to get all that food at one drive-in place. So they'd drive into, you know, in and out and they'd get two servings. Then they'd drive down the street to McDonald's and they'd drive down the street to Wendy's and they'd Seriously? load it all up and then they'd eat their six meals all in the car before they go no, somewhere that, where people might see them. That wasn't me. I wasn't that bad. My weight, I know what, my weight came from not exercising, drinking alcohol and just eating late night. I, I'm telling you, I, didn't eat, I had only had, pre, I only had, pre, I had Jeffrey pretzels Beecher, and Jeffrey Beecher, you're so fucking full of shit. I can't even handle it. I, I can't like Kelly, j- I have be- we are best friends you I didn't drive to four drive-ins no, not four drive-ins about? but like you want you didn't just get 400 pounds because you drank and ate late at night you could pack that's it a in. full-time job Jeff like 400 you, you, pounds you is a full-time pack job it in. okay maybe I blocked it out of my memory no right? like you know this is like this isn't Jeff- the abused no. Jeff feature <laughs> starring Kelly Osborne show okay <laughs> <laughs> no but like honestly we were both the same and then it would be like, whenever we're bored, you want to go to lunch, you want to go this. And I, sometimes I'd find myself having three lunches in one day. Yeah, I did a lot. Of, a lot of, th- well, that was, you know, being the face of hotels, I would always do like a couple lunches, a mm-hmm. couple dinners, and then, you know, to stay awake, I'd drink vodka Red Bull every night. That was my go-to. Yeah. But it, it, it's the vicious cycles we get ourselves into and the habits that we form when we're young that stay with us for life. And I think that it, it's all about breaking those cycles and starting fresh and and committing to a life change. I know that people always like, I need to go on a diet. Diets don't exist, they don't work. Diets have been tried for millennia and there's never been a diet on itself that's been successful long-term. There's a lot of diets that work short-term, lots. Not one 
diet on its own has ever worked long term. No. And, but just to go back with something you said, Kelly, about you were presented with the options. You were overweight. There's a lot of reasons why you got there, and, and my big thing is prevention. But let's just take people that are in a position where they're 50 pounds overweight, 20 yeah. pounds overweight, 100 pounds overweight. It's sad to me that people aren't giving the full range of options because I have to say up front, bypass surgery saves lives. People that are 50 to 100 pounds, if they do one of these types of surgeries, and gastric uh, sleeve is one of the better ones, they are going to live longer. But the sad thing to me is you're cutting a big chunk out of your stomach. You're changing uh, your ability to, to absorb critical nutrients. And as you said, you need lifelong follow-up. It's sad to me that that's our go-to because the real go-to should be psychiatric help, some sort of system where you're incentivized to exercise every day, not three times a week or twice a week, and you're incentivized to eat the right way. Why isn't that part of the description? Let's take COVID because right now. How come a, nobody talks about losing weight and eating right? That's about as effective as a vaccine. But no one wants to touch they that. Don't, they don't because we live in a world of instant gratification and people don't want to sing for their supper anymore, if, for lack of a better term. Everything is instant. Everything is in the palm of our hands. And I think that that's the one great thing about COVID is that it's taught us to kind of sit back, s learn a bit of patience, and kind of address the things that are most important to you. All of the things that aren't important kind of fell by the wayside for me anyway. And I think that when it comes to weight loss, it, there's so much shame about it as well that I know for me... It was like, oh my God, if I'm fat, like people are gonna hate me. They won't look at me and I'm disgusting. And it, it's crazy the the social standard with fat and yeah. just that word alone. I don't, it's not a word I like even saying. And it, do you know what I'm saying? Like it, yeah. like it's, of course. It, you know, it, it's a personal journey. It's a lonely journey. It's a tough journey but the payoff is so worth it. And that's why I say you have to have a lifelong commitment and it's little baby steps. Like I never thought I'd be able to drink a protein shake. And then I did mm. some, tried some all different ones and I found one that I really liked and now I drink one every day. I never thought I'd like drinking vegetable juices. I love them. Um, I never thought that I would enjoy hiking. I love it. Like it's all different things that you, you learn to really have fun with it. And there's ways of working out that don't feel like working out as well. I, I just want to touch back on something you said about being ashamed about being overweight. I never, as a thin person my whole life, I never really got that. And I'll never forget the day, I think it was like in 2006, so not that long ago, I had to work out a group of about 20 losers and we were on the beach in Hermosa and we were all jogging. We had 20. Maybe, we maybe had, you should say the biggest, biggest loser. loser. I was biggest just thinking, loser. I was like, I was like, wait, just so you guys are aware. He's, he, I was like, I, the same thought. I was like, when he says losers, he's not talking about like fat loser people. He's talking about the biggest loser, the TV show. Okay. So we're out jogging and literally people are saying, hey, fat ass. I had never realized the abuse oh you've no idea oh my god it's horrible, horrible. Oh, wait, doctor, I, do you remember, i was in do you remember shock what happened I, to me on Southwest? I knew black people i had no idea people would on the street say fat ass to you to your face oh i my had god. no idea I, that shocked me so, i would, that, i was driving in my car and my window was down and i'd have people tell me that killer was one you fat fucking bitch or you I fat kill yourself and like all like i every I day people on my realize Instagram, the no. shit that you social take social media it's crazy well, I used to always get, whenever I was in like an obnoxious convertible, like an old Rolls Royce or something, I'd be driving and my friends would always laugh because they'd be in the car and be people would drive by and be like, you fat asshole. Like, <laughs> and I would get that. That, that shocks me. I, I never knew that. Day. And then the other thing I got, which is a real, this is crazy. There's some kind of like phobia. I totally phobia that. The Wait, Southwest, like, yeah. You fat asshole. No. And you didn't even do anything. Wow. No, doc, I went That blows on, me away. Doc, on Southwest, there was this one woman that would work and when I was going back and forth and headlining in uh -huh. Vegas, there was this one woman that worked there that would not let me on the planes because she said I was too big. And it was the craziest thing. So the first time it happened. Oh my God, I totally forgot yeah. about this The woman. first time it happened, I was walking out. I'm like, do, 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 do. And like, it was like Friday afternoon, all bachelor and bachelorette parties. This is like the peak of no my- No wonder he was so mad. This is the peak of my, <laughs> the peak of my theater career, Doc. Everyone yeah. in LA knows me, right? right? So it's like, 
30, 40 people there, all beach, beach, what's up? Hey, I'll see you guys at the show. And I'm walking, I'm like, do, 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 do. And then the lady's like, um, where's your second ticket? I go, my second ticket? I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, you're, we're sold out and you can't get on the plane. You're too big to fit in the seat. I go, listen, lady, I, I literally fly in this thing like five, six times a week. Like, I'm fine in the seat. She's like, no, you're too big. You need a second seat and we're sold out. You're gonna have to wait probably till tomorrow to fly because I think we're sold out for us tonight. I go, oh I'm going God. on the plane. I just keep walking. And I go, I sit down on the plane and they have cops come on and everything and they, they take me <laughs> off. Oh my God. And then so I, see, I speak to the, the, the supervisor and the woman's like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, listen, I'm like, I don't even use double at the point at that time. I didn't have the double seatbelt thing. And, cause they oh yeah. Cause they usually you need the seatbelt yeah. extender go, and that's always I go, embarrassing. I'm, I go, I might be big, but I'm, I, I could still use one seatbelt. Like I was like proud of it. They're like, she's like, I'm so sorry. Like we'll definitely get you on the next flight out. I'm like, all right. So then like, you know, they're like, we're going to, we're going to reprimand her. You'll never see her again here. I was like, great month later I'm just walking and I don't even remember what she looked like then she just stops me again and I was like oh you and I just like I keep walking I I got on the tarmac like I didn't even make it onto the plane and a team of cops around me and oh, I'm like God. it was like it was like I was a drug dealer like it was crazy they're like freeze I'm like no <laughs> like, <what's going> <laughs> and, then, and then maybe they wanted to freeze the fat off you yeah and then like, they were I, I thought it was just so mean and rude like I call my attorney I'm like can't we just sue them can we do any like for just PR just to annoy them all the money goes to like a, a weight loss charity or something he's like no I'm like what, what do you mean no like you can't do anything and then I just couldn't find Southwest anymore. I was like petrified at this woman because I was so fat. Wow. But it, it's yeah. like we laugh about that now, but like it's demoralizing. It's horrible. Like you must have. Well, you know why? You can't go to a gym then. If you feel that way, and I didn't realize why yeah. you would, how are you going to go to a gym and have your stomach bouncing a little bit when you Thank go you. on a machine? That's exactly what like it if was you're ashamed, you can't even go in the street and work out. So how are you ever going to lose weight with that attitude? It's the, the country owes. Everybody that's been overweight, a giant apology. I what agree they with did. you on that. I 100% agree with you on that. It's insane to me how people aren't encouraging. They'd rather point yeah. fingers. They should be going, yeah. They should be going, get yeah, it done. Like, like how I say, What's get, with it, that? get it, get it, get it. Like, <laughs> come on. I, I, don't, I love seeing people try. I yeah. love seeing people want to come through the other side. I love an underdog. Absolutely. I don't understand why... People want to keep you down, I guess. And it's, it's, it's fat phobia. It's fat phobic. And you see, like, and, and that's the whole thing. It's like, you don't like what you see when you look in the mirror. So you don't want to go and look in the mirror. And so you don't want to record well, it and you want to do something about it because you got to stay in your house. I used to literally, I, I felt so numb when I go in, the, in the, I, I wouldn't want to look in the mirror and, and there would be mirrors all over the bathroom and I want to look at them. And then Did I, you ever do the shower in the dark? I always shower in oh, the dark. Oh, shower in the dark. I and used to do the same thing. Of, That's so oh, no, no, sad. And that, no wonder it, depression sets in. I would think I wasn't alive. That was when I was at my fat. It's like the last run in Vegas when I was like... I know the feeling where the hot water is pouring yeah, down your face I'd be and like, you're like... Am I alive? Am I dead? This is like... I didn't know what was going on. It was like... I literally thought I was dead. It was the Well, then you get feeling. the other thing is at that weight, Jeff, you get sleep apnea. And so you're not getting good sleep. And you now have no we know idea how bad his sleep if you was. never have sleep, yeah. now you get depressed and anxious. I remember the, the worst it was was I was taking like a dozen Tylenol PMs, three Ambien's, and I was like, <laughs> and I would wake up after like 30 seconds. You are of sleep. lucky you're on this planet right now, Jeff, from where you were. Mm -hmm. so, it's always, it when, is when, amazing when, how when, far you've come, Jeff. When people that are really overweight like start talking, I just hug them. I'm like, I know. I'm like, and I look them in the eyes. I'm like, I know, I know, I know what's going through with your head. And I tell them, because like for me, my biggest, I want to talk about mental therapy because my biggest therapy moment, and this I hope will help people because it helped me, I always resisted therapy. I'm like, I'm fine. Therapy's for losers, you know, da -da -da, for years. And I go, and I'll never forget, I walk into this one therapy session and, I, and the sky was dark. It was like, it was just evil. Like when I walked in, everything was like angry and I just so I walk in with this guy and I hated the therapy session. But I don't, I don't remember what he said that broke me down, but he was like, all right, well, when did you gain weight the first time? And then we, he kept asking me questions like when I was my heaviest, when I lost weight. And then he's like, okay, so you have abandonment issues. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you gain weight when you were told when you were 12 that you were adopted. He's like, you gain weight 100 pounds and your mother died. You gain 100 pounds and your father died. And you gain 100 pounds and your best friend died and your partner. I was like, holy shit. I was like, I got abandonment and insecurity issues. That's it. And I was just so happy. And I remember I walked out of the therapy session. I'm like, I don't need therapy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Birds were chirping. The sun was shining. And I was like, holy shit, that was it. And literally, that's when the weight flew off. I lost 120 pounds. When he got the stomach surgery, I kept doing therapy, and then it was like it was on. Just and then COVID it. happened, and we turned into um, what healthy? Uh, no, <laughs> aviator. 
Oh, the OCD. But yeah, but the OCD also was good. Because the reason why I got so healthy during Corona and I lost six, the last 60 pounds and I got the leg surgery was I, the OCD was so bad, which we can get into in a second. And I go to the doc. He, what was the drug you wanted to put me on? Prozac or something? Well, there's some of the SSRIs. Yeah, are, I like, have. See, I'm on an good. SSRI for my lupus yeah. uh, and, 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 loop and I said, problem. doc, we took so long to get me off drugs. You can't get me back on drugs right now. And he goes, well, the only thing you can do... I go, what's the holistic way to treat OCD? He's like, you got to work out for an hour a day. Exercise, so I did four hours exercise, a day. Exercise, exercise, exercise. So I did four hours a day, worked out, cardio. Do you see, but can we just stop for one second? Do you see how abnormal that is? What? He tells you to work out for an hour, and you go from, oh, I'll just do four hours then. Okay, but the, who cares? We're just breaking it down. But it We're, worked. No, 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 no. I'm saying, but like, do you see how... I'm wearing mediums. What's yeah. up? <laughs> um, see, see, I didn't, see, I didn't say Balmain. I said medium. <laughs> I didn't Love say you. double ball main. I said medium. <laughs> With all my projects, my number one mission is always just striving to be myself. And when you visit European Wax Center, you get the best of the best. European Wax Center certified wax specialists are expertly trained in preparing, protecting, and pampering your skin. Bikini waxing is their particular specialty. They do over 7.5 million bikinis a year. Jeffrey, are you going to be getting a bikini wax this summer? I mean, now that I have my new body, I probably should be, Kelly. Can I give you a bikini wax this summer? I'd love that. The secret to their signature comfort wax, and they say comfort wax because it really is a comfort wax. It's a proprietary blend of beeswax sourced from Europe and other skin soothing ingredients that allow for easy hair removal for a less painful experience. And let me tell you, it is so much less painful. European Wax Center is so confident you'll love their services. They're offering all first-time guests their first wax free. How sick is that? That's exciting. Visit waxcenter.com and book your reservation today. Your first wax is free. You better hold my hand. This is scary, but I'm, I'm doing it. I can't hold your hand. <laughs> Visit waxcenter.com and book your reservation today. No, but it's true. When there's there's just something magical. I got to get my little spiel. You know what's magical, Doc? You're fucking magical, my man. The fact that you're here, <laughs> I'm in the best mood since we've been doing these podcasts. Love my best friend Jeff's Kelly, even though she caught me with pretzels and, and potato chips last night on the side of the road. That's like a crackhead in like a crackhead. No, it was you were. It was like it literally. It was like it was a crackhead, like trying to find the last rock. The carbohydrates are heroin. But do you know what the chances they're, of receiving me at like eight twenty-seven on the side receptor. of the road? Like the chances of you bumping into me is like hitting lottery. Um, <laughs> it was so funny. I literally was like, I could. I was on the, a work call as well, and I was like, hold on, I have to call you back. And I. <laughs> And they pulled over to the side. It was so funny because you were like, it was like, give me the last line. You know? You know listen, in my own defense, <laughs> my house is perfectly set up. Like, I go home, there's like 10 green juices, salads. There's not one unhealthy thing in the house. And I'm like, oh. Oh, do you know what I do, though, in the middle of the night? What? I have found out that I, when I um, got stressed out, I sleep eat. And it's not even that I, I know I'm doing it. It's not like I'm fully asleep, but like my decision making isn't quite there, if that makes sense. And like I just walk to the fridge like half asleep in the middle of the night. So now I've had to start leaving like a salad or like something healthy that's like easy for me to pick up because I will find something in the back of my freezer or something <laughs> that that is I'm like. I didn't even know I had this. Yeah, some people almost sleepwalk. You almost have to get a uh, a lock, you know, get a chain but my, or But do you know who else does the same night. thing? Is my dad. Because I told my mom that I've been doing it. She goes, oh my God, you're just like your father. Your father's been doing that for years. And I'm like, <laughs> I, like I don't, I, sometimes I wake up and I look at my bedside table and I'm like, I made that last night? Yeah, crazy. No, that's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah, you know what? You have to try to break that because one of the new things that we didn't know like a decade ago is your body kind of has two big levers one lever is eating digesting and that's kind of a grow mode and the other is fasting and dna healing and yeah. regeneration so we're really trying to sneak that digestion part of the day into maybe a six or at most an eight hour window so people that eat in the middle of the night and all that bullshit before about oh eat every three hours then you won't get hungry that's all garbage you want to minimize that, that window so i do intermittent fasting and well, not when you're eating in the middle of the night. No, or not. I know. Um, and 
I have found the benefits of that to be incredible. Like I I'm, agree. Like in the morning, I'm so much more alert. I'm so much more like I feel like I have more you energy. You don't need breakfast. No. I don't. Okay, so thank you. I haven't had breakfast doctor. this morning. Jack. I haven't either. I'm like raring to go. You know, you work out and you do your fast, and then you you start in at about noon. Yeah, that's what we do, noon to eight, and yeah. then that's it. When I'm in the zone, right now I'm not in the zone. I got to get back in the zone. We got to well, like you, really kick me in. You're in the red in the zone, zone now. Last night, you you were in the pretzel no, Pringle. No. He was in the red food. zone, yeah, Kelly. He was. No, but when <laughs> I'm in when I'm in the zone, which is going to come any moment now. <laughs> I do. I, Any I, moment. I do. I do. The clock's ticking. I, I, do, I, do, I, do, I do intermittent fasting, as we all know. I do, and I, do, I drink green juice and my lemon water. And then at noon, I'll have protein and a salad. And then three hours you are, later. When you eat clean, you eat really clean. And I, it's, that, to me, is always impressive because I'll always, like, I'll still get the salad with the croutons. You won't. Yeah. And he's, like, he is really good. And, and that's where, like... I've always, I, I'm grateful to you because we check each other in that way. We always do. But because like, and it's weird. Like he'll that's come another and, thing. Friends, mm -hmm. acquaintances that are on that same page that understand that help. Do you know how much of an aid that is? People that's on their I own. That's why I said. It's almost impossible. You lose weight, and all your no. overweight friends are mad at you. You need support, and it's massive. Yeah. No, we we were talking about this with uh, uh, her friend who's an addiction specialist, right? And I, I brought up weight loss, and she's like, "Don't talk about weight loss right now. This is about addiction." And I'm like, "Well, Kel, weight loss needs same it, it needs the same kind of support and the same yep. kind of group. Like, you know, it's not like think about it easy. If you're an alcoholic, to get help. But if you're an overeater, it's not. There's, where's the help? Where do you go? You know, people just say, well, "Oh, get, okay. get get your shit in order. Just get healthy." You know, it, but for, you cannot get healthy unless your mind is healthy. So you have to start with the mind in whatever it is that you're doing. I get it, but my point is, that there's so much help available for drug problems and alcohol problems. It's not and this not whole country. Food. It's totally we don't, we don't have really good exercise experts. We have trainers. We don't have exercise experts. We don't. The dietitians are kind of, I think, in the wrong mode. Mm -hmm. You know, they're and everybody, not. It, it, it's so strange to me because. Everyone's like, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I have learned that's not true. Um, if you're a child, it's true, but not if you're an adult. And We're not even sure if it's true for a child. Really? No. This whole thing about, oh, your kid's got to have a full stomach to go to school, that slows them down in a certain way. There's something about fasting that heals the body, that regenerates it. That's, that's a huge thing to keep you healthier. Mm -hmm. And this whole thing slowed about... Slowed me down when I was a kid, my full stomach. Yeah, it, it's, you know, there's something about fasting that makes you more alert, but you got to have exercise has to be a component. And this it whole thing about the wimping out of America and, oh, it's okay if you walk three times a week. No, it's not. That's better than nothing, but that's not enough to counteract the obesogenic environment we live in. Yeah. And so we have to stop kind of saying, oh, that's great. Oh, you walk twice a week. Oh, you play golf once a week. That's good. That's better than nothing. But that is it's not, not enough. enough. And I just want to throw out one little study that we did from Biggest Loser that, to me, brings a lot of this home. As you know, we had universal success with old-fashioned, eat better, eat less, work out every day. I was just going to say portion control. 99% of people lost 80 pounds or more. The problem was, at the end of six years, when we followed them up, obviously a number of people slide back. Number one, they have no support. Yes. This country is the worst for support. Doctors don't have enough time to do it. Trainers aren't knowledgeable enough to take care of people that have lost a huge amount of weight. They're just into keeping people where they started yeah. out at. They don't know how to prevent a backslide. And so what we found was the people that worked out 15 minutes a day on average, which is still a lot, that's basically a half an hour every other day, they gained all of their weight back. The people that maintained a huge amount of weight loss worked out on average 70 minutes a day. Now that's not easy, but that's something we have in a fact. And so if you lose a huge amount of weight, you can keep it up, but you've got to work out a lot. You can't work out a half an hour three times a week, and that's a myth. So either you, you do the full boat and you get the full results long term, 
or you don't, and no one's there to help them. Like Jeff said, we don't have the emotional support, we don't have the exercise support, there's no exercise doctors. I'm embarrassed, I went to Harvard Med School and I'm talking to people about eating better and working out, it's an embarrassment. My colleagues are doing heart transplants and liver transplants. I'm like telling people, gee, you're not eating right and you should work out, it's, it's almost sad. Yeah. But that's what will prevent them from needing a liver transplant from fatty liver, prevent them from needing a heart transplant from coronary artery disease, and prevent them from being in a nursing home from Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. So much of this as well, which I'm learning because of my father having Parkinson's, is that a lot of these illnesses start from bacteria in your gut. And so one thing that I also do every day now is I take probiotics every single day because if you can keep your gut healthy, then the rest of your body will be healthy too. And when you think about it, I always look at it like you take a shower every single day to wash your body. So drink water so you can clean your insides. That's you the way brush your teeth every day yeah. to keep your teeth safe. Walk, exercise mm -hmm. for an hour every day, just like you would brush your teeth, even if you don't get a high from it. I think Jeff gets so happy about thing. this podcast today, guys. This got me re-pumped up. <laughs> <laughs> I need no more pretzels and Pringles on the side of the road. No I, and we all fall yourself. back. I do shit, bad stuff. You know, I'll have but a every, chocolate Everything happens day, for but, a reason. Today yeah. was the day to get me back on track. I'm so it's happy It's because right you now. got busted last night. It doesn't, that doesn't matter. <laughs> but it, it all happened in, in a progression to lead up to today's, you know, talks. And I'm really excited. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start Monday. No, I'm going to start being healthier today. But You're going to start today. No, no. What I'm Forget no, no, the no, Monday no, no. stuff. Well, let me finish what Monday is. Monday is I'm going to do my Instagram 90-day posting thing again. I did Why? great. Okay, this is, but this is again. It puts myself in we, check. I get this, but this is again what we do as FFPs, former fat people, where we're like, oh, no, we'll do this on Monday, and I can build no, it up no, to no, Monday. No, no, no. I just said. I know this, but I, I'm, I'm not. Let me finish. Right. I'm almost going to agree with Kelly on this one. Uh, of the, course. We, always, everyone agrees with Kelly. We, we do this whole so thing where annoying. we shut up, Jeff. Where we um, <laughs> where we build up this like I, I'll do it this day because that we can be comfortable with, and we build it up, and then that day comes around, and we're like, oh, hmm. oh maybe next, next day, right? Okay. Yeah, maybe so next week. So, so to clear my name here of, of not falling into that, I said I'm gonna be healthy as of today, but on Monday I'm gonna start the 90 day workout, so I can May first it, and boom. Let me just say one thing though, Jeff. I know where I'm going to work out, not only for the next 90 days, but for the next 180, 365, because I work out seven days a week. So I know when I wake up, I'm going to work out. Uh, there's no, I mean, it's cool that you post because you're helping a lot of people. But you have to know now, maybe you're a person that wants to work out six days a week. So you know every Friday or Monday or Saturday you're not going to exercise. But I believe as we all sit here talking, we should all know where we're going to work out every day for the next year because it, you've got to have a plan right now. It's interesting that you say that because it's something that uh, my boyfriend has started to do. And he's like, I have to commit to something every single day. So he started to do uh, jump rope and with weighted The toughest ropes. exercise ever. And he, his body has changed within like two months. It's insane. He's got like an eight pack now. And it's just like, he's not doing that much different. He's just doing his jump consistency, rope every single day. Consistency. And he, the reason he picked it is because he can take that jump rope with him no matter where he goes anywhere in the world. Like you, can't you can really also take steps anywhere you go. You know, you can, when you go to a hotel, people go, oh, I didn't like the gym. I'm like, did they have a stairway? Yeah. Go up and down it nonstop. Yeah. Right after you wake up and then go to your meetings. And that's something like I, I started to read this book. I think it's called The 5 a.m. Theory where um, it's about, and it's kind of like, I don't know if that's the exact name of the book, but it, it shows like about how all the most successful people in the world and it shows their, um, their schedules and they all get up at five and the first thing they do is work out and or meditate. And I or think both. They do both, yeah. And it's, it, I think those two things to have in everyday life is so important. And I, I didn't believe in meditation. And then I got the Calm app and I did this like 21 day course. And then I learned that it takes something, it takes 21 days for you to create a habit and then three months for it to be a lifelong commitment. And I think that when you think, like, if you just do something for 21 days, it, it's, it becomes habitual. And if you can do it for three months, you'll do it for the rest of your life. Why not? It's not that hard. 
It's funny that you mentioned that because that's one of my theories too, just jumping back to the weight loss is maybe we need to send people that are overweight if we want to try something before bariatric surgery, we need to send them somewhere to do regular exercise, to teach them how to cook, mm -hmm. to teach them how to eat, and then after 21 days they can get a habit and they have a chance. If I tell someone exactly what to do in a 60-hour medical exam, that's not enough. We know that. And if, if I go with you for one day and show you what to do, that's not even enough. So maybe I think it's even much more cost efficacious than surgery, which is a lifelong, you know, scarring procedure. You know, I, I really favor a 21 day out of home experience as something everyone should do before they get bariatric surgery, because I think that's not going to eliminate bariatric surgery, but it might markedly lower the number of people that need it. That, I mean, I, I still needed it, but that's what I did with the vegan retreat. You know, and, and I was trained the same thing. You know, 30 days creates a habit, 90 days creates a lifestyle. And it did. It was, you know, it, it, 30 days totally. And I lived in, before that, I lived in hotels for almost 20 years. So I, I had no room kitchen. Room service. You yeah. had, like, that I, was I had it. room service and bread and shitty food. Have you, uh, have fake, you ever fake seen the way Jeff cooks? Fake salad. No, it I haven't. It is so funny. Jeff, like, just turns the stove on. <laughs> and just chuck stuff. <laughs> just he, he'll just be throwing stuff into stuff. I'm like, how? And then he opens the oven and doesn't put it on a tray or a anything. Just chucks it in there. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? That's totally how I cook. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you can't eat like That's this. That's The Bachelor. Like, it's not normal. And I, I, or, first thing I do when I go to your house every time is clean your kitchen counter and your stove because you just chuck things on there. <laughs> <laughs> and if, I, and if the, uh, the trays are dirty, I just throw it on the stove. I know you there. do. I've seen it all. I think he's trying to help his microbiome with all the stuff growing in there, you know, when he takes that out. It that is maybe the... so funny. Like, and, and like, what, did he tell you what he did after his leg surgery? He may have, but, oh, but God. humor so, me with it. So I'm there looking after him, and he's like, we need to go for a hike. And I'm like, we ain't going for a hike. He's like, no, I need to get the blood flowing, the blood flowing. I'm like, you don't need the blood flowing. You just had half your skin cut off. Like, no. And so Yell we, at him. we ended up going on. Flowing. We went to the end of the block and came back again. And then he's like, I'm dehydrated. I'm dehydrated. I'm like, <laughs> you're not dehydrated. We just walked to the corner and back again. Just sit down and shut up. And then he had somebody there having a meeting with him about stocks and Bitcoin and like all these different like. Oh, Stowe's over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's looking at you like you're insane. In between half the conversations, he's nodding out from the pain medication. <laughs> and then he's like, I'm dehydrated, I'm dehydrated. I'm like, fine, I'm, I'll get you one of your Pedialyte, because I made him like these Pedialyte pops, like froze Pedialyte. And he's like, they're not coming out. I'm not joking you. I turned around to walk to get something from the other room and come back again. And in that time, he had taken the plastic Pedialyte things and put them in the fucking oven. And I'm like, what is that smell? I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, I open up the oven and the plastic is just pouring and melting and there's smoke and the oven is on in fire. In my defense, I was just drugged and, and put it under for 12 hours two days <laughs> earlier. But he was I trying was, to get the, the ice yeah, pops. I was trying to get covers. the ice pops out of the plastic. Oh, it's a normal thing to do. It's not normal. And I, and I just forgot it was in the oven. I mean, He's come on. normal for a crazy guy. Oh, God. And I was just like, this is insane. Like, sit down. Stop talking. Like, relax. You, you've had surgery. Okay, fair enough. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, sometimes things get difficult, especially today. Is there something interfering with your happiness? Is it preventing you from achieving your goals? Well, don't worry. Isn't that right, Jeff? Yep, we're not alone, Cal. There's help. We are help. not alone. There is help out there. I can't tell you how valuable talk therapy has been for me during this pandemic it's really really helped me going to going to their web page you know betterhelp.com and just you know getting inside the therapist like i didn't even like the first couple therapists i worked with and i found one i clicked with and it's been a game changer such a game changer better help will access your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist you can start communicating in under 48 hours oh it took me exactly a day and a half and i was set and then I started talking to a therapist once a week. It was great. One of the best things, like to, to know that at any time of day, if you have a problem, if there's something that you need help with, they are just a click away. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. 
so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. Join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of experienced professionals. Our listeners get 10% off the first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com forward slash Osborne. That's betterhelp.com forward slash O-S-B-O-U-R-N-E. I'm, no, I'm normal for crazy. Yeah, let's move on. Let's keep so helping our fans. Just so that people understand, like when you lose a lot of weight, you do a lot of the time have loose skin or excess skin. And Jeff decided to do a surgery where they get rid of the extra skin, where a lot of, I I didn't have that, you. Yeah, mine was really bad. My legs were like a 400 pound person's legs and I was 200 pounds. Everybody comes back in at a different rate. We all know that women that have twins, sometimes they can just, the skin can retighten perfectly. But then again, women that are having twins are relatively young and they only are stretched for, you know, six of those nine months. Mm-hmm. Uh, so everybody has a different rate that the skin will come back in, but obviously when you're older, when the skin's stretched past a certain amount and then based on different genetic predilections, you know, the skin remains and it gets in the way of exercise a lot of times. You know, you have a flap of skin that's moving. It's very disconcerting. Yeah. Yeah, and I luckily got connected with Dr. Hayworth and his incredible team over at his plastic surgery center that cut off all the excess skin on my legs. And uh, we will be doing deal. an episode on that later on. It just takes me a minute to come back from it because the things that I witnessed were so gross. And, and the, uh, like, <laughs> yeah, and guys, oh. j- just so you know how awesome my best friend Kelly is, uh. even though she does abuse me on the uh, Let's Abuse Jeff Beecher star and Kelly Osborne show every day, <laughs> she did sit with me for two weeks, night and day, washed me, cleaned me, clothed me. And took care of me like the best best friend in the world. She's the greatest. Um, you don't understand. I had to sleep in the same bed as him for ten days, and like because he he would go what I call walkies. He'd be like, I'd be like, Jeff, where are you going? He'd be up in the middle of the night, just like walking around. I'm like, what are you doing? You've like you're like covered in like. Also, he got to wear this really amazing suit afterwards. It's very tight. It's kind of like a full body Spanx. <laughs> That has just an Very opening. Very Melrose. Did yeah. you get it on Melrose? No, it just has like an opening hole for like the butt and the dick. And he, he was just like walking around and I'm like, Jeff, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> like, it was like, it's like the things that <laughs> I've been through with you. It's crazy. It's oh so funny God. though, because I'm going to sadly agree with Jeff on one point is that, you know, even when you have a surgery like that and you're putting that incision at risk, you do have to move. And we, I, as a doctor that's had a lot See, of people I, that I, need I, I skin reduction. I didn't get reduction. this from nowhere, Kelly. The, one of the greatest doctors no, on I, the planet he just told me. Saying, I need to get the blood flowing. I need to move. I'm like, okay. He needed his adrenaline. He, he needed he, his, his mind control. Me. He's been manipulating me for two decades. He's, he puts he his needed his seeds. endorphins <laughs> that he you <laughs> cut him off on, and you got to keep moving. And the plastic surgeons understand. See, I don't make this up, Kelly. He puts it in my head. They have keep moving. The keep moving. Plastic surgeons have their slice of the pie. They do this amazing surgery, and they're proud of the scars, and they want to keep those scars together and looking perfect. I'm like, I don't want to break that habit that you just mm-hmm. said you have to do for 21 to 30 days. He has this great habit of exercise. Can we let somebody that's depending on regular exercise to maintain weight loss, can we have them sit for a month, as the plastic surgeons will ask you to, and break that habit of exercise yeah. to make a scar better? I don't give a you know what mm-hmm. about the scar? I care about the habit. Yeah. I'm not going to let him break the exercise habit. So this is where a weight loss doctor like me and plastic surgeons, we have a, a, a difference of opinion yeah. because they want the surgery to turn out well. I want the patient to turn out well, Yeah. which is a totally different gig. And so we have to accept some dehiscence of the scar. Now this actually makes a lot of sense about where you were in your head with all of this because it was like we had one doctor saying, don't move. And I'm listening to him because I hadn't spoken to you. And Jeff's like, no, I've got to get the blood flowing, <laughs> like screaming at me. I'm like, okay, okay, now this all makes sense. Okay, well, glad this came full circle. <laughs> now you see, I'm, I'm like, what am I, would you guys call me a good crazy person? Yeah. <laughs> the good kind of crazy. Larry calls me the happy sociopath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. I actually have a meeting with Larry's son after this. No, that's awesome. Send my love. I will do. Okay, so let's wrap this up. 
because we can talk about this. This isn't the only time we're going to talk about this on this podcast, but let's talk about the first steps you have to make in weight loss because well, let's get, how about let's no, do that no but let's get, get your opinion your opinion my opinion doctor's opinion okay in my opinion the first step you have to make is just the admission that you need to lose the weight and the understanding and the commitment to yourself that that's what you want to do because it is not like oh i'm just gonna lose weight it's not as easy as that it's a it's a it's a commitment to yourself you have to be in some sort of therapy and you need support you need to do this journey with someone else um there are so many support groups out there. There are so many different um, apps as well um, that you can join where you can hold yourself accountable. I mean, there's some, like the ones that are advertised on TV right now, some of them are even good. I'm not a fan of medication to lose weight. Um, I am a fan of... I tried that, everyone, and it was a disaster. It's horrible. You turn into a sweaty psycho. Psychopath. Psycho. Sweaty psycho, and you're yeah. angry. In my case, I cried every day for six months at the end of the. Uh, I remember. Yeah, the. the uh, and he'd be dipping sliced turkey into into mustard, crying that he'd be right, eating let's move on. with Keep, his fingers. Let's focus. How do we, how <laughs> but do we, that's a there? big point. It's because the rate of suicide is way up in people that do massive deprivation and don't get proper support. So this is a, you're really talking about a very metastable psychosocial situation with weight loss and this whole process, and you got to address it. I agree. I, I'll talk about me, segue to me. So I, I tried so many different things over the years, one being medication like we talked about, you just talked about, and, you know, I would highly recommend, and everyone's different, but I would highly recommend no medication because every time yeah. I've done medication or forms of med different medications or multiple medications to lose weight, it ended horribly, horrifically. Mm -hmm. And the best things and the only things that worked for me was, you know, fixing my head, med meditation and therapy. That was, that was the biggest thing because that enabled me to then think clearly to then change my diet and exercise. And the biggest thing was having Dr. Hazenga and my friends consistently push me to work out every day. And for me, working out a lot of times meant just walking for an hour or two and you know, just moving and rolling calls. Some people would be, oh, I'm too busy, I got too much going on. Well, I have a ton going on also, but I was able to at least move for an hour or two and in my craziness, as Kelly calls it, four hours, but I still moved and I worked and I, I was able to work, get my job done and still lose weight and, and keep the uh, blood flowing. Also, and, and then I, diet and learning how to eat because I grew up in hotel rooms. You know, I didn't know about same. nutrition. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, I grew up if it didn't, if you couldn't cook it in a microwave, you didn't need it because you were on a tour bus. So it, it's it granted like my mom was very big on like making sure that there were salads and stuff like that. But we didn't eat it. We didn't want that. <laughs> I was like, kid, that wasn't yummy. And another thing that you would just say. Yeah, you guys had like bad heads and M&Ms. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Gummy bears. <laughs> Working out in the morning and waking up early really helped me with weight loss. The Because I woke up really early in the morning and I'd go straight to the gym. Circadian and, rhythm, and pattern, it, huge. It really, really helped. And if you don't feel like working out, another thing I did was I walked. I walked everywhere. I would get those 10,000 steps in every day no matter what. No matter what. Yeah. I mean, we, we started 10 during the beginning of Corona. Yeah. We got up to 20. Yeah, do you remember? I was like, yeah. how many did you get today? And like, we became obsessive about it. And like, I think the biggest, I got like 23,000 steps in one day. No, one my, my, my best friend, David, he got his steps up to 20. And then he's like, we gotta do 20, we gotta do 20. And I was like, all right, 20. And That's I went 10 and, miles. Yeah, it was a lot. I mean, my thought always just echoes yours. The first thing is recognition. I know when Biggest Loser started, I was kind of against this. It was like an exploitative thing where they'd make people take their shirts off and they'd show their belly. But in retrospect, you know, a lot of the contestants said, you know, that really was a, a, a germinal moment for me when I had to look in a mirror, which nobody wants yeah. to. I had to admit that I was morbidly overweight. I had to admit something needed to be done. And, you know, you're covering it. You know, everybody's got spandex pants. You know, people don't know their waist size. They don't see their waist. They don't see themselves. And so the first thing really is you do have to recognize it. And then my thing, and this is where I maybe hit Jeff too hard over the head, you have to understand what the ramifications are. I mean, we have people in our culture right now that are beautiful people, motivated, incredibly talented. You know, say, you know, a very popular singer. There is, this is a beautiful woman. This is a talented 
great personality individual, so there's nothing wrong there. But the problem is that individual, if she doesn't change, will die 15 to 20 years earlier. Otherwise, what's the problem with being overweight? There's really no problem with being overweight except that it leads to certain bad outcomes. You know, you don't sleep as well. You're more anxious. You're more depressed. You no. get these diseases, and then you die. That's not, a, that's not okay. Let, let's, let's just talk quickly because we have a couple more minutes on about, about the sleep apnea part because so many people call me that are overweight, and, and don't, they're not even calling me about dieting. They're like, I can't sleep. I'm waking up. I'm choking. I have the, the sleep, sleep apnea. The sleep part for me yeah. is was also what led me to drink more and do more drugs because I couldn't ever sleep. The sleep and then, the and then that has pills. a background because yeah. when you do drugs, you sleep, and, and then you, you're you tired go to and, sleep, and you're but tired you in the morning. Sleep. Doc, and then you're tired in the morning. It's so a, how do you wake up, right? And you take another drug or another, you know, speed and that, up thing or whatever. And that's what I was doing. And the drugs don't get you natural sleep, and then you need more drugs, and it just, it's a, it's a, it's a downward spiral. And that's the whole thing. It's about breaking these cycles. Being confident enough in yourself to say, fuck it. I don't care what you say about me. I love me. I'm going to do this for me. Well, and that, for me, was a huge turning point. One of the best things, and I hope people actually watch this documentary because it really, really helped me, was Jen and Larry made me watch um, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. You ever watched that documentary, no. Kel? You watched no, it? I've never seen it. So it's about this guy that juices for 90 days. Mm-hmm. And then we all started getting into green juice and juicing. And when I was still morbidly obese, just cleaning out my insides and stopping with bread and sugars, stopped this little, well, not stop, but calm down the sleep apnea incredibly. And it helped me sleep. I was still fat. Anything that loses weight is going to yeah. help you. I'm going to take a little demur on the juices because that's taking one of the best things ever, fruit and vegetable, and you're pre-digesting it. I want my body to burn the calories to digest it, and you're just presenting the body with a caloric portion of that vegetable, the juice. So I'm going to go give a little pushback on that. I'm huge on natural fruits, natural vegetables, not so much the juices. Just so we're clear, I don't like the, like the one drink, the juice I'm drinking right now, which is a orange and apple mm-hmm. and a lot. I usually, I barely ever drink that. It's my I, favorite one. It's Kelly's one. and I actually brought it for her, but then I need it. Why not just have more. the orange and the apple? That's what I'd like you to do. The ingredients to here, just sit down and eat no. those fruits in the whole. Then you get the the, the, I, the, I do. The fiber I, and then the sugar goes in much more slowly and I your body can handle ever, it. This is, again, this is Kelly's favorite. I brought it for her this and, is I, and then I stole drank it. it. Yes. I knew and you did And I do just the green juices. I do the very low calorie green juices and they're like my fuel. And I love See, them. the reason why I, okay, I've replaced candy with fruit juice, if that makes sense. Like sometimes when you're going through the day and you're like, oh my God, I want something sweet. I'll drink. Fruit juice is candy with more vitamins in yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, it's a that, better yeah. form of candy, but just recognize it's candy. I still have bread. Bread's not good for you, but I say bread for dessert. I go, I want a dessert. So I have a really great piece of French bread mm-hmm. with some butter. That's my total over-the-top dessert. Everybody else is paying $15 for a quote-unquote real dessert, but just so I'd you recognize what you're yeah. having. Yeah. <laughs> just recognize it. Call, it. call it what it is. All right. Dr. Isinger, will you come back on our show later to, to talk about more of this with us? Because we could talk about this for probably about 10 episodes <laughs> and still not cover everything. Just we'll make sure that you don't catch, catch Jeff next time. I, I come know. On, that's all. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Look, it was meant to be because it really it, now I'm, I'm kick started and like I feel I feel guilty. I have all the shame. No everybody. guilt. No, that, no, but I do. But it, it is, but it is real. And, it, and I do. And, 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 and it's motivated me. And the next time I see you, Doc, I'm going to be back on my track, and you can, you'll see on my social media, and I'm going to start my 90-day workout cycle, which will turn into forever for the rest of my life again. Because I was thrown off from the surgery because I did I was put on medication. I did take too much medication. No question. I did no question. start eating shitty again. I, I fell off all the habits and, 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 and lifestyle changes I made during Corona. Who Self-correct. Also ferociously masturbating several times a day. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> That's part of it. <laughs> I wish. Anyway, so yes, thank you guys. I, I appreciate you both. Great. And I just want to thank our listeners again. Thank you so, so much for listening to us natter on about weight loss. Yeah, and let's, um, and you, you should follow Kelly if you know him, Kelly, at Kelly Osborne or me at Jeff Beecher and the great doctor. What's your Instagram? Dr. Heisinger. Right, spell Heisinger. H U I Z E N G A. It's hard for me, too. Even to in my texts, it's spelled wrong. It's H-A-Z. so funny. I, 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 H-E, I, anyway, so that's Dr. Heisinger, Kelly Osborne, Jeff Beecher. Follow and download our show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, 
and at the Podcast One app and wherever you get your favorite podcast. And subscribe. Do Click that subscribe button to our podcast. We have a new episode every Tuesday. Every, every Tuesday. Tuesday. So don't miss it. Get it, get it, get it, you guys. Thank you so much. What you call freaks, we call family. Everyone's welcome. We love you. Love you guys.